Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. Something that's really exciting is that with today's modern aftermarket parts, whether it's a modern 5-speed or 6-speed overdrive transmission, or you got a modern fuel injection system, or you've gone really big and you've thrown in a third gen Hemi and you've really modernized your classic car, it's really exciting to see that so many out there are racking up the miles on their classic cars. They're no longer just storing them in the garage or keeping them in their enclosed trailer just to come out for the occasional car show, but you're actually driving these cars and you're out on the road and you're really racking up the miles and I gotta give it to every one of you guys who are doing that. You're helping spread the enthusiasm. You're showing your car off to every kid who's out there and showing that you can really drive them, you can enjoy them, you can daily these cars, you can really have a lot of fun with your classic and not just keep it as a piece of artwork in the garage. So today I thought we'd offer something a little helpful when it comes to a lot of you new guys and wanted to show you a little bit of what I carry in the trunk of the charger every time I drive it. I never take it out. This is something that I learned at an early age. If you're gonna daily a classic car, you're gonna wanna keep a few things on hand at all times. And for this car and being how rowdy it is, there's a few things that I carry that maybe is a little overkill for a lot of you guys. So I'm not saying this is the definitive list. I, I don't want to come off like a know-it-all in that if you're not doing what I'm doing, you're crazy. But I am going to offer you what I carry in this car as maybe a suggestion for a lot of you guys. And you can cherry pick what you think will work for you and what maybe is a little too overkill. Well, as you can tell, it's been a while since I've pulled these out. Got a pair of... Uh, nice camping chairs. Use these at the car shows. I think we had these out at the Holly Mo party. We'll get rid of these. At least for right now, I'll put them back in. I keep this 19 gallon storage tub. I think I picked it up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And I carry all my tools and extra emergency stuff in here. All right, so tucked in between the tail lights and the tub, and the tub's pretty heavy, it's full of tools. So I got this nice padded mat. This is actually a gift from the wife. <laughs> she clearly knows me a little too well. And it's a nice padded mat. You, if you're changing tires, you want to put your knees on there, or if you got to lay on your back, this is a really nice one. And uh, pick this one up. I think it's an Amazon purchase. It's a Traxian. I don't know if, where it's made or who makes it or whatever, but I've used it a few times. It's uh, saved my knees more than once. So I like to keep this in the trunk just for emergencies. Again, a lot of this stuff is just in cases. And of course, this is not the car care, get the car cleaned up for the Saturday morning car show type of bucket. This is the emergency, what I bring with me sort of stuff. And there's no order to this. There's no priorities here. So please don't think that this is uh, a top 10 list by any means. Nice full roll of duct tape. Can't go wrong with duct tape. We're gonna put that back down here. This is a very basic tire patch kit. Uh, it has come in handy a few times, got a lot of the tar strips, and being that we are not carrying a spare tire since we have the 29 and a half inch tall uh, Mickey Thompson's Super Streets and the Front Runners, um, I hate to say it, it's almost impossible to tuck one of the slicks. Well, it actually is impossible to tuck a slick in here with this bucket. I've tried, trust me. And an extra front runner, since I am running an off-size pair of tires, it's better to have some patch kits. So with that patch kit, I also have tucked in here um, a really cool electric tire inflator. I've used this more than 
I like to admit, I think I need to recharge this. Oh, no, 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 okay, we're good. All right, so not only do we have, okay, we're at a half charge right now, so I'm gonna go plug this in. Uh, clearly, I've used this, but <laughs> in addition to the inflator, you got the nice locking inflator. It does have a nice LED light. Uh, I have used this, especially if you have to change the tire or inflate a tire in the dark. This one does cast a really good beam. Oh, there it goes, fired right up. <laughs> All right, so this one has been really great. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in the small electric tire inflators. This one is from the Slime Company. You might recognize them as the same guys who make the tire sealant slime. In fact, I think I've got a can of it. Yes, I do. I have a can of slime here. So emergency tire repair, I mean, don't get me wrong, this stuff will screw up the balance of a lightweight rim. Uh, I have lightweight aluminum weld wheels on the charger. When it does dry, it's gonna throw off your, uh, throw off your balance, but that is really <laughs> a small price to pay to get your butt home. So I do have a can of this, I do have a tire inflator, and it is uh, the biggest just in case that I've got, and it, it has bailed me out more than once. So if you haven't already checked out a tire inflator, I think you can even get this guy, uh, I think you can get this guy at Walmart, obviously you can get this anywhere, but uh, this is a really common tire inflator and it really is a nice stout piece. Oh, another thing, it's rubberized. It's got a nice protective rubberized kind of shield on it. So that's pretty cool. You can drop it, bounce it around, hit it with tools. I don't recommend it, but you can, and it will hold up. So that's pretty cool. All right, get these guys out of here. Making a mess. Got a good set of sockets, uh, heavy duty Craftsman sockets. I do have a breaker bar in here and these are useful in, obviously, if you don't have uh, a lug wrench, use this, or heaven forbid, you have to do something with your suspension or other heavy duty stuff, you're gonna want a breaker bar, you are gonna want some heavy duty sockets. Jumper cables saved me a few times. In fact, I use these very jumper cables to get the car running at a stop at Power Tour several years ago. So always bring some cables. All right, obviously the heavy one, is we've got our one and a half ton jack. These are the jack handles, come together very easily. All right, and this is their lightweight one and a half ton jack. It will get the job done. It is not what I would suggest for your daily labor working on the car wrenching. This is a tire change uh emergency floor jack a bottle jack is good too don't get me wrong you can get a very solid useful bottle jack i use this just because of the quick lifting ratio and i can fit it in my tub if you guys want to run a smaller jack by all means bring a jack but you don't have to run a, a big guy like this so let's pull this out this was a really cool little tool this is from the company my mechanic and not only is it a flashlight, nice bright LED flashlight, it also is an emergency light. You can lay it out in the road if you have to change a tire. I really hope you don't have to change tires on the side of the highway. We want you to come home safe, but this has been a really great shop light and it has a nice, really nice hook so you can hang it from you know, the inside of your hood or you know, you hang it up like this and it works really good. You'll have to check out my mechanic. Don't recommend you use a crescent wrench for working on your car, except for in emergencies. You can round nuts off, you can round the edges off of things, but sometimes in a pinch you need a crescent wrench. Don't say no. Good set of wire strippers. These are my old ones, they're kind of loose, but good set of wire strippers. I do have a roll of electrical tape this will hopefully get you home. Dummy light or a test light, just in case you have an electrical gremlin. Uh, you can bring an ohm meter, but this is just kind of quick and dirty. And they're, I think they're probably $6 at any O'Reilly's or Advanced. This is nothing special. But every now and again, you gotta, you gotta use a dummy light. All right, 
box cutter or a good Swiss Army knife or just a good field knife is great. It's just a box cutter. You know you'll need it. Okay, so a whole mess of rags. Uh, I know guys who bring a roll of paper towels, that's fine. Um, these are cheap and easy. Get them at any hardware store or any auto parts store. I think I've got half a dozen here. So I also have a bunch of these tool kits and I have them for specific reasons. This is a generic tool kit. You got your small hammer, you got your dikes, needle nose pliers, small dental screwdrivers, you know, for small reach. I did have to use the tape measure out on the road when we were doing some very quick and dirty double checks on alignment. We were checking for toe and it was very easy to use that. So I just decided to always bring it with me. You have a screwdriver set, every one of these kits, these things are 30, 40, 50 bucks, depending on how aggro you wanna go, but a good, useful, generic tool kit. Always gonna be worth its weight. The big breaker bar. This is what I was telling you guys about. You're never gonna not need it, especially if you gotta change tires, you gotta break them loose, you're gonna need this. All right, I know I just showed you guys my little cheapo toolkit that I had here, but I am gonna show you that I do have one of the larger, let's put the lid down, one of the larger 200 piece tool sets. This is like a Northern tool or what you would just, you know, effectively call a, a Chinese toolkit. But hey, it really does do exactly what it needs to do. Let me take the little cover off. And the nice thing is, is that it's got enough tools here. In fact, it's got tools here that I don't even have in my toolbox in the garage. So uh, yeah, this has actually bailed me out a few times and it does have a lot of the same stuff there. That's fine. I don't mind having doubles. Redundant systems is what keeps a lot of pilots alive. And this has just been really, really helpful over the years. I try to keep these clean, try to keep them organized. Again, this isn't my daily go-to toolkit, but it is something that in case something were to happen with the car, I know that I've got the tools necessary to keep me back on the road and at least get me home. So a good little 200 piece kit is really a nice bit of insurance to have in the car. This is just an old Indian blanket that I actually got off my father's car. He had a 72 Pantera. He would keep this in the trunk. And this was a lot of times the, <laughs> the emergency blanket that he would lay down on. Uh, I now have that pat and that nice padded mat. So instead, this is just a nice something that in case the kids are cold in the back seat, I can bring this out or if we're laying out on the grass and just hanging out. A couple other things that I always carry in the car is this I have tucked behind me underneath the driver's seat. It's my fire extinguisher. I always keep a fire extinguisher in the car. Even if it is just a mild driver, always keep a fire extinguisher in your classic car. And the last thing I would suggest is just a big bag of zip ties. These are cheap insurance, very easy to, keep on you. It doesn't cost you but a couple bucks. Zip ties will get you home. And if you're a roadkill or roadkill garage, you can apparently build a car with zip ties. So always bring yourself a big bag of zip ties. Well, hopefully that was a little helpful to a lot of you guys who are interested in racking up more miles on your classic car. And we'd love to have more of you guys taking your classic Mopars out on the road, especially if you've gone ahead and stepped up to a more modern power plant, you have no excuse. Absolutely drive that thing, drive the wheels off of it. And we just wanted to equip you guys with some information on what we use and what we carry in our car. And hopefully if it's of any use to you, that you can do the same for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, leave a comment, maybe share it with your friends, help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please go over to www.moparconnectionmagazine.com. We publish new articles Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you. There's no passwords, there's no downloads. So definitely come and check us out. We'll see you there.